Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. Today I just wanted to make a real short video to showing you this 1995 GT Timberline FS mountain bike that I bought about a week ago for 50 Swiss francs, about $50. And um, the reason I'm showing you this now instead of doing a full restoration video is today at work, a guy who's traveling here in Switzerland, he doesn't always live here, he lives back in the States, he wants to borrow a bike. Well, he, he wanted to rent a bike and uh, noticed the price was pretty high. So I said, hey, I thought, hey, I have a bike that he can ride. So uh, rather than waiting to kind of do a little resto restoration video uh, on this bike, I thought I would just go ahead and get this into workable condition so he can ride it for a week. So that's why I'm making the video right now. Let me give you a little look at the bike and why I think it's interesting and why I bought it. So first of all, I've always wanted a GT bike. Ever since I was a kid, I loved seeing the GT BMX bikes in the bike shop. Ever since then, I always loved the GT brand, even though I've never owned one up until now. So the reason I thought this was interesting, first of all, price, $50, that's really cheap. But aside from that, the reason I kind of like it, it's a cool bike, I think, is the triple triangle. That's a really unique feature that I don't think any other bike brand has, and I don't even think GT does anymore because I was looking at some of their newer mountain bikes and I didn't see that. So, but that's a really unique feature, pretty cool. It probably doesn't do anything but make the bike heavier and just kind of look neat, but uh, I like it. And another reason I kind of like this bike is it's 1995, and I, I don't know about all 1995s, but this one has the solid fork, which I know usually you would think is worse, but I think on an old bike like this, that can actually be better because then you don't have to worry about busted out old shocks. It's just a solid fork. And I'm not going to be going on any kind of crazy downhill course on this bike anyway, so I think the solid fork will be fine. The other thing I kind of liked about it is it's a chromoly metal frame, and apparently that's better than whatever high tinsel or high strength or whatever it's called, the, the other steel that you find commonly on bikes. I guess chromoly is like a 4140 grade steel or something like that. One of those 40 something grade steels. Didn't notice that, but it looks like this one here is made in Taiwan. What else did I like about this bike? So we had a solid fork, we have a chromoly frame, we have the cool triple triangle, and we have cantilever brakes. I know some people don't like cantilever brakes, but I have them on a cruiser bike and they've actually been super reliable. I've like never had to do anything with them. As far as gears, this is a 7-speed freewheel. It is Alveo rear derailleur. I think the same for the front. I think it's Alveo all over, which I hadn't really heard of that. I don't think. I wasn't sure what that was. Same thing with the shifters. Now, speaking of shifters, that is the one thing wrong with this bike. As you can see here, for example, I'm in the 6th sixth, sixth gear, excuse me, right now and it won't go anywhere it's not catching same thing over here not catching now it will shift the other way sort of anyway it's just not working too good usually these trigger shifters have some kind of ratchet mechanism in them so sometimes that ratchet gets like gummed up or for whatever reason it's not springing you know with where it should be allowing it to to grab so sometimes you can use wd-40 and clear that up so I just bought some today and I'm gonna give it a shot right now. Other than that, the bike actually rides just fine. The brakes work pretty good. The tires look horrible, like they're very ugly and they even have some dry rot, but they do seem to be holding air as I've had the bike about a week and it still seems, the tires still seem fine. So what I'm gonna to do today is simply try to get the shifter working and let, uh, let my friend borrow the bike for a week. Whoa, <laughs> I didn't know that would happen. But basically what you have to do, oh, look at that, it's already starting to work. Look at that, amazing. Basically, all you have to do is get the WD-40 mixed into the shifter and that will kind of clear up the uh, debris or whatever, or gunk or whatever it is that's stopping it from working. Wow, that actually worked much better than expected. I didn't even do very much at all. Now it's working. Whoops. Went a little bit crazy with it there. 
But I mean, honestly, it'll evaporate by itself. You can wipe it off real easily, so it doesn't matter. Oh, still not going up into, oh yeah, it is. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. That may be a bit of adjustment then. There we go. Now it's going. Yep. Down to two. Down to one. Sorry, I'm bumping the camera every time I rotate. One. Two. Three. All right. And being it's kind of a WD-40 day, I'm going to go ahead and actually clean the chain with WD-40. I don't usually do that. I usually use something else but I don't have anything else today so I'm gonna try to give it a little clean with the WD-40 I mean it's not a good clean obviously but just to get it it looks so dry and so terrible right now I'm gonna at least try to get it a little bit better looking now I'm gonna go ahead and loop the chain because as if you haven't been told probably a million times by now WD-40 is not a lubricant it's a dryer, whatever, but now really it's not a lubricant. Uh, it does kind of evaporate. I mean, maybe it has a little bit of lubrication properties, but that's not really the point. So there, now I have, I have some chain oil, but I have too much. Whoops. So let me go ahead and get some of the excess off. Whoops. How come I say whoops so much when I'm working on my bike and stuff? Real professional. All right, there we go. Uh, it's pretty ugly. It looks pretty grimy still. Okay, that looks very slightly better. Surprisingly, these wheels are pretty straight. Take a look at that. They're dirty, but they're pretty straight. Oops. Okay, they are, they are not that straight, but they're not that bad either. Definitely fixable. The woman I bought this bike from, well, at least her boyfriend, said that she was the original owner. Enough playing around with the WD-40. It is time to go home. It is pretty late in the shop tonight. Check it out. Just after lubing the chain up, now it's shifting properly. Watch this beauty. Wait a minute. Let's focus first. Yeah. Oh, that's so grimy looking to be honest. It'll be fine for a week. All right. So now we're in the middle gear. Let's go down to the bottom. Seven speed. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Cool. Oh yeah, one other thing I wanted to say that's kind of unique and weird about the bike, which I don't like, are these ridiculous, dorky handlebars. These are probably going to go. I'm sorry, that's just not my style. That's not anybody's style anymore, I don't think. Um, okay, that's about it for tonight. I'm going to ride this bike back home. And um, by the way, I'm going to do more videos on it. This won't be the last video of this bike, at least I hope. Hopefully my friend doesn't let it get stolen. But uh, assuming it doesn't get stolen or somehow otherwise lost, uh, then I will have more videos on this bike. I'm thinking about even racing this bike. <laughs> but anyway, if you liked this video, if you like this kind of classic bike restoration slash hacking uh, type of thing, Go ahead and subscribe, stay tuned. I'm probably gonna do more on this bike in the future. This won't be the last video. There could be, in fact, a lot more. Okay, that's about it for this video. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.